All right, guys, let's talk a little bit about timber selection, how you're cutting your logs for your timbers, for your frames, and what are the kind of things, uh, what's suitable for a wall post, what's suitable for a horizontal member. Now, it's kind of important if you guys are milling your own stuff, and I'm assuming if you guys are like me, probably a lot of you are going to be. So, kind of important to cover it, and we're getting back into saw milling now because we got a bunch of logs again, and uh, we need more material. So, your wall post material does not have to be as good as your horizontal material, your tie beams, your top plates. That stuff, anything horizontal you want, really good, the best that you can get. Now I'm not saying you want your wall post to be junk material, but you can get away with a little bit more. You can have a little bit more knots. I mean there's just, it'll take more load with the grain and compression uh, adjacent to the grain I guess you'd call it. So in a horizontal member you'd be loading it parallel to the grain. When you're loading something parallel to the grain, it's going to be weaker that way than if you had it stood up. Think about how the tree grows, you know. You get a good sized tree, straight up, could be 10 inch trunk at the bottom, could be 80 feet tall and have a huge top on it. And that stem of that tree supports it. So it's kind of you want to think of this kind of structure the same way. So anyway, what I have in this log here is I've got a good, I've got a good crown in it, a real good hook. But that hook doesn't start. It starts somewhere about in here. Okay, so I already know that I need a bunch of 8 by 8s um, I need, uh, what do I need? I need 10, about 11 foot 8 by 8s for the uh, queen pulse. So, and I also need, uh, I'm going to need 8 16 foot long 8 by 8s for purlin plates. So I know I need that stuff. Now, there's a couple ways around this that I can, there's a couple ways I can use to, uh, to get this log how I want it. Now, this log is big enough for an 8x8 eight eight where I could put this thing crown up on the mill, make sure my, uh, make sure the heartwood's same height, you know what I mean, make sure it's all lined up. Now I could put this guy on with the crown up, I could mill this out and I could get a good 8x8 eight eight out of it, no problem. Is that the best option for this log? I don't think it is. Now this log is just over 16 feet long, so I have plenty of room, I can cut this thing where this crown is in it, right where this thing dog legs on us, I can cut that off right there and still have a 12 foot piece here that I can turn into an 8 by 8 Now why would I want to do that if I could just mill it up as is? There's two reasons. First reason, it's a pain in the ass to screw around with a crown on a mill if you're turning it manually. Even if you're not turning it manually, it could be a real pain in the ass to mill. The other reason is I'm going to waste a lot of material if I cut this with the crown in it still. Now I can cut this 8x8 out of this guy and still get some 2x8s for rafters out of it. And then this section here is long enough, I can cut this into 4x6s for brace stock. Now down on the other end of the mill, when I set my mill up, I left a couple of these uh, the log clamps. I put a couple of them close together so I could do short logs. I could do like a... Uh, I think I could do like a three foot log on that, so this is perfect. I can cut this down, get the crown out of it, and I could still have a really good piece for brace stock afterwards. So that's what we're going to go for. Now we're not going to get to cutting it tonight, but I just kind of wanted to uh, discuss this a little bit with you guys as we go. And it's already getting late. The days just go by so damn quick. So uh, anyhow, let me fire up the saw, do a little measuring here, see where the best spot to cut this is. and. We're just going to run with it. Now we look down this now, 
and we have a nice straight log to work with. Now you look down there, there's just a slight, very, very slight hook in it. Not enough to really uh, be a pain, but we're going to get some good, there won't be a lot of waste now in this. Now this is a, uh, this is the thick end, we got 15 inches here. We've got 13 and a half inches down there. Doesn't help if I knock everything over. So we've got a nice log here. Um, I could probably get a 10 by 10 out of this just fine. But uh, you know what I should do though, so we catch, uh, I gotta get it supported on this end too, so we probably better scoop this down. Oh, where'd the strap go? There it is. Alright, so now we want to work on how we're placing this guy. I'm kind of happy with the way it's sitting right now. I got a very... It's actually, this side of the log is straight as an arrow. This side, the taper's more, is heavier on this side. So, I guess tonight we're kind of covered how you set this up right, how you get ready. Tomorrow night we'll, we'll cut it up and uh, I just don't have time tonight. But, like I said, this is a vlog, right? It's a daily, uh, a semi-daily deal. So, I'm going to clamp this end down here. Get this guy where I want it. Okay, now we have this end clamped. I want to see where the center of my heartwood is. The center of my heartwood right now is about 13 and a quarter on this end. <laughs> Kidding me. No way. It can't be right. Well guys, this end is uh, about 13 and an eighth, so guess what? I don't think that eighth of an inch is going to hurt anybody's feelings. What do you guys think? But, I've got that end. I've got this end clamped. So right now I clamp it pretty tight on the first run because I don't want any movement on there. So anyway, we're all set up for tomorrow night. We should be in, should be in real good shape. I got to get the contraption back on the tractor because that was kind of a pain to uh, Load that thing up. Boy, am I surprised that that heartwood's box straight the same. I'll do a quick walk around, do the shaky camera thing. So we're good and solid. We're clamped down really well. I'm trying to look. That's a nice straight log. The log's hitting every bunk on there. So. Now, because this end right here is a little smaller, it's only an inch and a half smaller, this is going to be nice. I'll plan out the boards I'm going to take from this end, from the uh, small end. That's why when you buy logs, you're buying them based on what the diameter of the small end is. That's how they figure your board footage, because if you bought it the other way, you'd lose a whole lot of material just because of log taper. So, some of the things to think about. All right, guys, that's about it for me tonight. Uh, now we got a log moved. We got one on the sawmill, got some more cleaned up, did a little debarking. We're making good progress every night in these few hours we have, so I'm not, I'm not too uh, upset about it. So I kind of wanted to give you guys an idea on the next log that I had loaded, this being the next log, kind of what you're looking for when you load it up and how you're going to set the log up. I mean, we've covered squaring up. We've covered measuring, 
you know when you're going to cut your cants out of these logs and your boards don't just trust the uh, scale on the sawmill because you have to look at that thing exactly the same every time to get consistent results so I use a tape measure for all my cuts pretty well I mean if I'm just ripping off one inch boards I could usually get them within a sixteenth or an eighth no problem um, but when it comes to my framing members I like to try to measure every time I don't measure and I use the scale I end up getting off just enough to where it irritates me and makes it a little bit harder to deal with but so anyway we got lucky on this one. The heartwood is centered pretty well exactly from end to end, which is beautiful. And once we took that hook out of the log, this is a nice straight log. Plus we have a nice four foot long piece to make some brace stock for the, uh, the queen post system because those are going to be a 30 inch by 30 inch layout. So the braces are going to end up being 42 and 7 16 long. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next one.